most likely place in our solar system to be harboring extraterrestrial life. The nearest equivalent to the surface of Europa are the glaciers of the Arctic. The microorganisms that are found in the glaciers and in the polar ice caps give us a good model for the types of microorganisms that might be found someday when we bring back samples from Europa. I become very excited when I look at the beautiful pictures of Galileo of the surface of Europa because we see magnificent colors. And those colors are very similar to colors that we see in bacteria and algae on Earth due to the pigments of these microorganisms. When we do get samples back, we will have a good idea of what types of things to look for, and we will have the ability to recognize the microorganisms when we find them. The microbes of Europa would have to be far tougher than their Arctic counterparts. They'd have to survive lethal doses of radiation generated by Jupiter's powerful magnetism. We know that there are microorganisms on Earth that have evolved to have the ability to withstand intense levels of radiation. There are bacteria that grow on the cooling rods of nuclear reactors. And if, in fact, organisms live on Europa, then they would have had the ability to adapt to these high radiation levels. So we must always be cautious about saying that life cannot do things because quite frequently we find that life does exactly what we think it's not capable of doing. The cracked ice surface may suggest something even more exciting. Heat from the core of the moon may have melted the ice from below. Just like the cracked Arctic ice sheet on Earth, Europa's icy surface may overlie a huge ocean of water. All life as we know it utterly depends on liquid water. Europa may be the only other place in the solar system where there's an ocean of water, and that means it's the most exciting place to go and look for life elsewhere. Beneath the icy crust of Europa could lie an ocean as deep as 60 miles. This cold, dark environment seems a fruitless place to look for living organisms. But the depths of the Earth's oceans prove that life can once again flourish in the most unexpected places. In the 1970s, the lights and cameras of deep diving submersibles discovered vents erupting hot water from the ocean floor. No sunlight ever penetrates, and the surrounding water verges on freezing. These volcanic vents support the most exotic life forms on Earth. It's certainly possible that those sorts of hydrothermal vents exist on Europa. There may well be teeming communities of organisms at hydrothermal vents at the very bottom of Europa's oceans. Now, on Europa, that's 100 kilometers down. The oceans on Europa are much deeper than they are on Earth. So those are not going to be easy to reach and investigate. Around 2010, NASA plans to send its most ambitious unmanned mission ever. Touching down where scientists suspect the ice is thinnest, the Europa lander will lower a probe that melts down through several miles of ice.
a second probe, a hydrobot, will swim down to the bottom of the ocean. As it descends, it will transmit live pictures back to Earth. The Hydrobot will be programmed to seek out hydrothermal vents, the most likely place to find life. This will be the most alien environment we have ever explored. Will it be teeming with tiny microbes? Or perhaps home to fully developed alien creatures? Even if we do discover life in our solar system, scientists believe that it will be fairly primitive. If we want to find complex life forms like us, we'll have to look far beyond our neighboring planets. If we want to think about intelligent life, we need to look past our solar system. We need to look at the possibility of Earth-like planets orbiting other stars and whether life might have originated there. And then we need to think about communicating with them. Any nearby aliens would already know that we are here. For the last 75 years, Earth has been leaking radio and television transmissions out into space. Tracking the sound Our broadcasts reach the nearest stars four years after they are transmitted on Earth. Our oldest signals, broadcast in the 1920s, have traveled past 100,000 stars in our galaxy. The Hindenburg horrible end has shocked the entire world. Beyond this point, 75 light years from Earth, no one would have any idea of our existence. Alien civilizations may be far older than the human race. Dan Wertheimer is pioneering a completely new approach to intercepting their interstellar messages. We don't really know what other civilizations are going to be doing, so we ought to try a lot of different strategies and not put all our eggs in one basket. Perhaps other civilizations, instead of sending us radio waves, are sending us light waves, perhaps from very bright lasers. Wertheimer is hoping to intercept laser-like messages that extraterrestrials are beaming across the universe. On Earth, we can produce laser-like signals a million times brighter than our sun. We have already transmitted